welcome back. This is your man, Warrior, and this is going to be the top three anti-meta characters. Now, these are characters that specialize in disruption of any meta, meta just being the most, the most popular characters. These are characters that no matter what team the opponent is playing, it's going to throw a wrench in what they're trying to do. Now, as we all know, the meta is going to flux up and down. And by the way, I wanted to side note, say thank you so much, Tommy Race, for bringing this idea up. Now, his idea is meta resistant farming is specifically farming characters that are meta resistant, meaning that they can go against any or disrupt any meta. And that is an excellent idea. That's probably another video another day. I just want to pull out the top three that I feel are most important for everyone to have um, on their team. So some examples of these uh, uh, team characters that we're talking about would be like Boba Fett or TIE Fighter Pilot, B2 Super Battle Droid, Sunfac, Rex, Emperor Palpatine, Rey if you have her Zated, Barriss Offee if you have her Zated, IG-88, Royal Guard, and others. Now those are characters that are going to disrupt the meta. And what I mean by that is it's your ability to impose your will onto the opponent. And the only way to do that is to shut down their strategy, their ability to do what they're going to do. So they build a team that is going to apply buffs and debuffs to your team and is going to do damage to your team. There are, are, are auto taunts in the game. There are other two tank combinations. There are certain factions that go into all stealth. And so what are you to do about that? Well, the top three anti-meta characters in the game are number three, Boba Fett. The reason why Boba Fett is in the top three best anti-meta characters is since his rework, he now has the ability to basically have to be killed twice, possibly more, but let's go off of his basic. Um, he is going to have to be murdered twice and he is a heavy DPS character. So you're going to have to have him killed multiple times, but this is why he's important for you. He's going to be fast and you can make him very fast and he can ability block potentially an entire team causing them to go an extra turn before they get to start to impose the will that they're desiring. In addition, Boba Fett does not care what tanks or taunting is happening in the game. He can target whoever, whenever, and wherever, which makes him an absolute threat. And thirdly, the game is all about buffing yourself and your team and debuffing the opponents. And so often in battles, you will see many buffs and debuffs on both sides of the field. Boba Fett takes advantage of that by doing mass damage to anyone that is coy enough to have buffs on them or unfortunate enough to have debuffs on them. And if they have both, it's a terrible day for them with Boba Fett. Number two falls into Rex. Rex is the number two top three anti-meta characters and he is the number one leader in the anti-meta. He's been around since basically the beginning and he has been relevant and in the meta report since the beginning. He is the character that through every single meta shift, he's been able to maintain a leadership position and be the counter to whatever is going on. Currently, the Sith faction that is happening right now and everyone using Sith and Empire, he is the direct counter to. He essentially is going to speed your team up by every time anyone on your team gets hit critically, everybody gets turn meter. It's going to make a so, sort of okay team really, really fast and is going to give you the edge you need. The second reason why is Rex is hands down the best cleanser in the game. If you want to know more about Rex, I do have an in-depth character review of Rex specifically, so check that out. Now let's move on to number one. And the number one character in the game for anti-meta is the B2 Super Battle Droid. Now I know this might surprise a lot of people that I picked a character that 
is not a superpower hitter and he's not a, a taunting tank and he's not an attacker and he's not a good leader. But what the B2 does is it allows you to impose your will onto the opposing team. He has a couple of unique abilities. One is Relentless Barrage. This is going to give him almost half the time an extra turn anytime another ally is evaded. It means every time you try and smack the opponent and they move and they dodge and they evade, he's going to get 40% of the time another turn, which means you're going against, you know, the Dooku's, the old Ben's, the now Sith faction with um, all of the evasion from Darth Maul. This is just going to feed him extra turns. 40% of the time he's going to get another turn. It says also, or damaged by an attack. So anytime you're, you take damage or you're evaded, which both of those are going to happen in bulk when you're fighting Sith, he's going to get an extra turn 40% of the time, which is almost half the time, which means this guy is going to be going off all the time. Hence the name Relentless Barrage. Now this is why he's key. His basic which is what he's going to be doing all the time, and he's going to be going out of turn all the time, is deals the physical damage, which shouldn't be critical damage. You don't want it to crit. There's no reason to feed another opponent's Rex extra turn meter or anything like that, but it will inflict evasion down for two turns. So in evasion down is critically important, especially in the newest meta, because it's going to prevent them the next round, the next two rounds, from evading the hits that you're trying to apply. So it's a really, really awesome basic ability that allows for you to prevent evasion from occurring. But his relentless barrage will be there for any time they do evade, giving him extra turns. But what he's best known for is mow down mow down is an aoe it means it's an effect it's an area of effect it's basically an attack on everybody and it allows him to do physical damage to everyone on the other side even if their stealth doesn't matter it's going to do damage to everyone it will dispel all positive status effects on them so it's going to take away all of their buffs and it will replace it 65% of the time with buff immunity for two turns. And that would be applied before the damage, which is pretty cool. So buff immunity prevents them from going um, back into stealth. It prevents them from getting other other abilities that they would want to get, you know, such as critical chance up or offense up or any of those really cool abilities that they give each other. This is going to prevent this. Now, why he's so important in any meta is he will take away their advantages, which is the buffs over their head, replace it with a buff immunity that prevents them from getting anything good over their head. And it allows for you to not worry about tanks or taunting. Rather, it allows for you to just go in and destroy the opposing team how you see fit without worrying about what tanks they have, without worrying about them being in stealth the entire time. It allows you to impose your will. Now, he does not taunt, which means that he's not going to be targeted unless the computer targets him through the RNG or, you know, the AI, the artificial intelligence is playing it that way, or the opponent is so irritated by your B2 super battle droid that they decide to go after B2. Now I'm going to go over how to mod these three characters. The way I would mod Boba Fett is I would mod him with health and potency. You want to get his potency up high because he's applying an ability block as well as um, you're going to want to get health because he's kind of a squishy character. So I went ahead and gave him two potency sets and a health set. And of course, down here, I added protection to keep him alive a little bit longer. I added some offense. And I added, of course, a speed triangle with critical damage diamond. Now, I modded Rex a little differently than others do. I did not make him super fast. Now, when he is the leader of my team, I don't need to make him fast because pretty much every team, other than a Darth Nihilus lead, pretty much every team is going to rely on critical hits, which is going to feed a ton of turn meter to my team. So my team does not have to be as fast. So I have made my Rex 
extremely powerful. That is what I'm looking for, is being able to do a lot of damage with him on his special. And I also am not too worried about him. I don't use him in the raids. Otherwise, you would want potency because he's a very low potent character, but you would want potency high if you're using him to remove turn meter. But even at 20% potency, I still remove turn meter quite frequently. Now I have an offense arrow, which you could put um, obviously um, speed in there. That would be smart. I could put a critical damage in here or offense, and I chose to do offense. And I have some protection to help keep him alive longer and some more protection in here to keep him alive longer. So my Rex has his physical damage at 2846, which is not bad at all, especially for a leader, because that's what I'll be using him for. Now let's move to B2. Now the B2 Super Battle Droid needs tenacity and potency, and this is why. The B2 needs potency to apply his basic and his AOE damage down to people to apply the negative status effects that he's trying to apply, such as buff immunity and the ability to apply the evasion down on his basic. So you need potency, but he is a tank, he will be targeted, and you want him in the game as long as possible. And if he's stunned, you are not gonna get to use him, so you want his tenacity up. So if you look, I have his tenacity over 70% and his potency over 80%, which is excellent. He does not have to be that fast, so I used accuracy in the arrow that will negate or get rid of 12% of the evasion and dodge that's happening, so he's going to more accurately hit the target that he's going for. I have him with defense here, and the reason for that was he's a tank, and I, there's no need for him to do critical damage. He's more here to stick around for the long haul. I did use this for the tenacity to get his tenacity over 70%. I have some protection on there because of course he's a tank and needs that. And then of course defense and offense. And I again used two potency sets with a tenacity set. So between all of that, again, he was able to get over 80%. And his speed is slow, but you do not need his speed very fast. So there are some other alternatives you could do with B2, which would include adding um, more tenacity sets and just putting potency down in the bottom. But again, you want him not stunned and you want him as potent as possible and you need to get his potency around 80%. So those are the three top characters everybody should be farming. You should be farming Boba Fett, B2, and Rex, and you should definitely get them up and get them in your squad. They will help you with any previous, current, or future metas that you will be facing. As always, I hope this helps. Keep yourselves safe. Have yourself a wonderful afternoon. Keep your gaming on. Warrior, out.